Hi everyone, music lovers, students, all of us, Music Makers Academy, me and Jen. Uh, so let's talk scales. There's this old uh, painting, it looks like Norman Rockwell. I haven't been able to find it, it's not Norman Rockwell, but it's that kind of style. And it's like there's this, uh, there's this little boy and he's wearing like an old uh, baseball uniform and he's got his mat and his glove and he's sitting at his piano bench and he's so unhappy and he's looking out the window and all his friends are practicing playing baseball and that's what he wants to do because he's just it's terrible that he has to sit at the piano and you know what he has to do he has to play scales right oh what could be worse okay well i feel sorry for that little kid probably he should never have been put anywhere near a piano uh, but too bad, right? It's part of an education. He'll get over it. He'll be he'll be done in 10 minutes. He can go play with his friends. He's not missing out on anything. And all, all those kids are ever going to do is play baseball. <laughs> He's going to have some music. He might really turn out to like it. But here's the thing. Playing scales. Like, what's so bad about playing scales? Don't you just hate it? Why do I have to play scales? And some of us have, you know, maybe I'm triggering you. Excuse me. I should have given you a trigger warning that, you know, did you have to play scales and your teacher would hit your hand with a ruler because you played a wrong note or something? Now let's forget about all that. Let's think about what this actually means and why on earth you would care to know this information in the first place. Number one, I'm assuming that you know your notes, right? I mean, you might not, and you might be a, an absolute beginner, and that's totally fine. And But you recognize the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be handed an instrument and be told what the notes are. You know, you need to know your notes. Um, but if you know your notes, what do you think step two might be? I'll tell you what step two is. Step two is knowing your key signatures. And what's the most basic thing you can do in a key? You can play the major scale up and down. There's a whole lot more. In fact, the whole world of music pretty much exists within the 12 keys and the 15 key signatures that exist beyond a certain point. When you get into, uh, you know, experimental soundscapes and stuff, then we abandon all that. Uh, but, you know, for the majority of most of the music that, that if you're taking lessons to do, you're probably going to need to know your notes and your keys. Step two. And there's a step three, four, five, six to 10,000 or something. It never ends. But you're not going to get it to even step three in that infinite sequence if you don't learn step two. You need to know your key signatures. Now, it's a certain amount of information, but it's not like learning 12,000 you know, words in a language or something. It's 12 keys, 12, 15 key signatures. And I'll explain why that is. Okay, we know that there's 12 notes in the world, but of course, because we have sharps, naturals, flats, um, you know, there's like 21 note names in total that we could be applying to these notes. Um, and so theoretically, you could play any melody starting at any one of those, those 21 note names. Now, of course, a lot of those are in harmonics, so there's still only 12 sounds, but there's more than one way to describe what it would be, right? Uh, so can we play a major scale from any one of those note names? Yeah, we can, but some of them are going to produce double flats and double sharps, and we don't use key signatures that have double flats and double sharps, except for very rare and unusual instances. And by the time you get to that music, you'll be very well prepared to deal with it. Uh, in the meantime, we're only using the, 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 the key signatures that don't involve uh, double sharps and double flats. And so that brings us down to 15, very concise. That's because there's only 12 notes, but there are three keys uh, six keys that are three keys, if you want to think of it that way. So C sharp major is the same as D flat major. It sounds exactly the same. You're going to use the same fingerings, the same slide positions if you play the trombone, the same vowels if you play a trumpet, uh, and so on. It's going to sound, it's going to look the same on a, on a, on a, pian on a keyboard or what, whatever it might be. But it's very different to think of those notes in D flat or in C sharp. It's also very different to read them whether they're written in C sharp or D flat. And you know, people who like playing, say Bach, for example, when you get to those, the, the D flat major or the C sharp major preludes and fugues, different editions do them in, in different keys or different written keys. They sound the same, but they look very different and it shouldn't be that big a deal. You should be able to do one or the other. So C sharp major, D flat major, F sharp major, G flat major, and B major, and C flat major. So those are the same in terms of their sound and in terms of what they look like on your instrument and probably fingerings and all those kinds of things. But they look very different on the page 
and they have different note names associated with them. So it's not a big deal. This is not rocket science. And I can tell you that I get, you know, pretty young kids. Most people don't start playing brass instruments until they're in grade seven or eight. And so that, around that age, they come for their first lesson, usually in the fall, in September or October. And I can tell you, every single one of them, by Christmas, can play all these scales. And they can play them in under two minutes. That's the rule. In one octave, up and down, all the note names correct, they can do all that. If, if you can, and you can say, oh, well, these kids are sponges. Yeah, sure, they're sponges, but they don't bring as much to the table as you might as an adult. We can all learn this material, but it's a hump that we have to get over, right? So in order to do this, we need a little bit of understanding. We need to be able to not have to look into a book to figure out what are the notes of, of what, you know, what's the key signature for, say, D flat major. And I have to be able to be able to do that, or I need to be able to go the other way and look at a key that has, say, three sharps in it, and be able to figure out well what key would that represent. So there's a, a little mnemonic that works two ways, and there's two little rules. And if you know these things, you can derive all that information. You're never going to have to look up anything from a book again. And then now you can start practicing your your key signatures in your major scales. Okay, so first thing is. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. So that's just saying B E A D G C. Did I get that right? Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. <laughs> C F. I didn't think I, I think I said it right. It's way easier to say that say the, the memory words, and I'm the same as anybody else. As much time as I spent with this material, it's much easier for me to say battle ends and down goes Charles' father than to go B E A D G C F. <laughs> It's way easier. So that's teaching me the order of flats, meaning that if I'm in a key signature that has four flats, I go battle ends and down, B E A D. So if it's four flats, that's what the four flats are going to be. It also tells me what's left over, what's going to be natural. So battle ends and down, those notes are flat, B E A's and D's are going to be flat, goes Charles' father, G C F are going to be the natural notes in that in that key. So I just need to know what key is that. We're going to get to that in a moment. <laughs> the next thing that you could use any number, lots of my kids come up with funny you know, uh, word to come up with that sequence of letters, B, E, A, etc. Uh, but the cool thing about battle ends and down goes Charles' father, and I'm saying it like that so you say it with me. Let's do it together. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. The cool thing about that is that it kind of works the other way, as in Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And that's the order that sharps occur in key signatures. So if a key has four sharps, they will be Father Charles goes down, F, C, G, and D. Those will be the four sharps in a key of four sharps, which also tells us which notes will be natural. So F's, C's, G, Father Charles goes, G's, and D's will be sharp and goes down uh, and ends battle. A, E, B <laughs> will be natural. Okay, so, so that's the basic information. Those are, those are the basic tools. Now, I'm very fluent, personally, with this information, but you can see that without the mnemonics, I struggle a little bit, you know? I can see it on the page and stuff, but I don't want to read it off the page. I want to just know this material. So I use those mnemonics. I, I think Father Charles goes down. That's, those are my, that's, that's four sharps. That's what four sharps is for me. So I recommend that. It's very easy. It's very fast, and it really works. Now, as I said, there's two words. This is one mnemonic that works in those two directions for the order of flats. Battle ends on down goes Charles' father. And the order of sharps, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And then there's two rules. There are different rules for flats and sharps. For flats, it's an easy one. They're actually both easy, but the flats is the easiest one. For flats, it's the second last flat. So remember we said four flats, battle ends and down, and. So that's A flat major. So what that means is if I start on A flat and I play all the uh, Bs, uh, Es, As, and Ds flat, and the other notes natural, it'll sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, it'll sound like a major scale. That's all that's telling you. That's exactly what that's telling you. For sharps, the rule is very simple. It's just telling you that the last sharp, so Father Charles goes down, that's D sharp. The last sharp is the leading tone. So that's known as in Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, that note, the leading tone, Ti, so one semitone up. So one semitone up from D sharp would be E. 
So that's E major. That's the key signature for E major. Father Charles goes down, right? So then if I start on an E and I play Fs, Cs, and Gs, so F, C, G, and Ds sharp, everything else natural, it'll sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. It'll be the E major scale, okay? It can go the other way. So let's just say you had a key signature, and like I said, that's at three sharps. What's that going to be? We know how to do this. Father Charles goes, that's three sharps. G is the last sharp, so it's the T. So up one from that is going to be A major, right? Now what if we went the other way and said, well, what's the key signature for G major? Well, we're going to go the other direction. The last sharp in this key signature is going to be one note down from G, so it's going to be F sharp. Now don't say G flat. Now that's the right pitch, it's the right sound, but it doesn't make sense in that key, right? And this explains, as we get into this, you'll understand why is it, why do I have an F flat on my page? Why don't they just write an E natural? Well, probably because you're in C flat major, and it wouldn't make sense to write an E natural in this, this context, right? It might have made your part simpler to read and most arrangers will make that adjustment. But oftentimes if there's a big chord, they want a conductor to be able to look and see that there's a C flat major chord there. So you're not gonna have you know, a, a D sharp, you're gonna have an E flat. So there's a reason for that, and which will make a lot of sense to you as you continue to learn this material and it becomes second nature to you. But let's go the other way. Let's say G major, uh, we go down one, we say it's F sharp because we need all seven letter names we just need to get the right sharp flats and naturals on them. So it's going to be F sharp. So that's the last sharp. Let's go farther up. Oh, we're there. So if I start on G and I play everything natural, but the F sharp sharp is going to be G major. Let's try something a little more interesting or a little harder, a little more complex. How about B major? Down one from B will be A. So Father Charles goes down and A sharp. So that's one semitone below B. So it's five sharps. Battle ends and down. Sorry, <laughs> Father Charles goes down and ends bad. E and Bs will be natural. These notes are going to be sharp. So if I start on the B, I play all these notes sharps and these two naturals, it's going to sound like a major scale. That's how key singers should work. Let's do a couple of flat examples. So let's say I was in three flats. Battle ends and. Go back one, E. Right? Battle ends and E. So that's E flat major. Everything else is natural, but my Bs, Es, and As are flat. I start on E flat, it's going to sound like a major scale. Um, let's go the other direction. Let's say if I said D flat, what would be the key signature for D flat major? It's going to be the second last flat. Battle ends and down goes. That's it. Five flats. So B, E, A, D, and G are flat. And Father Charles, F and C are natural. If I start on D flat and play that key signature, it's going to sound like a major scale. That's it. That's the information you need. But then you need to just do this enough that you don't have to do that math, right? But you need to be able to work this out on your own. You need to be able to look at a piece of music and go, what the heck is that? I've never seen so many sharps on a page. And go, Father Charles goes down and goes, oh, it's B major, great. Or battle ends and down goes, back one, up. It's whatever key it is. That's, we need that basic information and we need to be able to play all those scales on our instrument as a, as a basic step two of your process. Learn the notes, learn your keys. And I can tell you there's lots of people that have played for longer than I've played. I, I, I have students that are very experienced adult musicians who never really did step two. And that's why they're coming for lessons. So oftentimes they don't even recognize that. They think, I don't know, I'm not a very good reader and I have trouble with this. I'm not very good at playing chord changes. And I'm trying to, I listen to all these uh, YouTube videos on, on, you know, tritone subs and stuff. And I can't seem to follow the, the discussion. I'm not very good at theory. It's like, no, you don't know your key signatures. You don't know the basic language that we're working with. Of course you can't carry on a conversation. Uh, and there's a whole lot more benefit to be got from this. And pretty soon, as mechanical as this process may seem to you, very, very soon, you're going to find yourself having a musical experience as you go through those keys. And that's coming up. Stay tuned.